Good Saturday morning. Well, Jesus has encountered enemies here, and they say, you're doing these miracles by, uh, by Satan. You're, 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 you're a part of Beelzebub. He cast out a demon, and so people are criticizing him for it. And uh, he comes to sort of bear down on them a little bit, and he talks about, uh, you know, uh, the people who uh, kind of discount him. They're, they were vehemently opposed to him. Sounds like today. Uh, you don't get much pushback from people who think about Muhammad or Buddha or anything like that. But you mentioned Jesus, and people are ve vehement in their, uh, their uh, opposition to that, vehement in their opposition to anything related to Christ and the gospel. And that's just normal because that's the way lost people are under the world, the flesh, and the, uh, the devil. But he said, look, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God's come upon you. You can't deny this. And I got to thinking about this. Why, why, do, a lot, why do people want miracles? You ever thought about that? Uh, I, I've asked for miracles, and I'm sure you have too. Miracles are shortcuts to life problems. You know, they just shortcut. You just get a solution. You don't have to endure anything. You get a solution uh, because you're powerless. You get a solution that you want and you want God to do because there's just not uh, anything much, you know, uh, that you can do about whatever it is. Now, the desire for God to work is one thing. The demand for a miracle or a sign is something else. The demand for a sign, like these people were uh, demanding, was really just a, a, a demand to see if he was real in their estimation. And he said, I'm going to give you a sign. It's going to be the sign of Jonah. He said, you know, Jonah uh, preached, uh, preached to Nineveh, and uh, they repented. And he said, uh, you know, but you, you haven't done this. Uh, that's the only sign you're going to get. And he said, uh, people who saw great things and repented and turned to God uh, are more significant than you are because uh, you, you're seeing the Son of God right here. You're seeing the power of God, and you're denying and You're saying of, of the devil. Well, we need to be careful when we pray. We need to be careful when we put expectations upon God to shortcut our answers and solutions to the problems that we have. Many problems in life are not going to be solved in a day. Many problems in life take a long season of time, uh, maybe a lifetime, for God's strength and, and God's mercy to be upon us. And we need to fall upon the Lord and His good graces time after time and again. We've been taught this in praying so that God can work His will in our lives. And uh, just remember that. Miracles sometimes, the desire for a miracle or whatever, is really a desire for a shortcut uh, for some of the issues that we've gotten, gotten into. Now listen. Every time I pray for a sick person, I pray for a miracle. Every time I pray for a person who's going through a bad time in marriage or whatever, I'm praying for God to intervene. But the solution may be long-term, long-term. So let's just remember that. Let's not shortcut what it takes to be persistent in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will teach us that life uh, is lived in seasons and sometimes your will comes to us in seasons. And so let us not expect more from you than you desire and demand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.